Over the years, I've made a lot of videos about optimizing NVIDIA settings, but this new one today is my best one yet, as I'll be taking you guys through all the steps you should take to unlock insane performance gains while achieving the lowest latency possible. No matter what graphics card you have, no other PC specs, this will benefit you, so please drop a like and also subscribe. Before you do update your GPU drivers, most people these days use NV Clean Stall. It's a free app that removes NVIDIA bloat by allowing you to customize and select what driver components you want installed, removing certain bloatware like this on screen. However, I myself don't like to mess around with my NVIDIA driver components as I myself do actually use them. So instead, I like to just head into my GeForce Experience app or even better, the new NVIDIA app, which I'll talk about later. And I like to just download the latest drivers via clicking that green download button. Having the latest drivers is the best practice as outdated drivers can be the main cause of crashes and performance issues. There's also an alternative method to get them, just google NVIDIA drivers, click on the NVIDIA website, then input your GPU and you can select the latest one from there. I am aware too that a lot of people out there do prefer the older drivers, but if you are using an older driver, make sure to find the best one for your specific graphics card. Next, let's optimize our NVIDIA settings. Now for the majority of people out there, you should be able to just right click on your desktop and find the NVIDIA control panel there. However, if it's not there, you can head into the Windows Store and search for it and it should pop up. But once you are inside, if you click on that middle option, then click Take Me There to the 3D settings, you'll see first up is Image Scaling. What this does is it adds a spatial upscaling technology that's paired with a sharpening filter to output an upscaled sharpened image of a lower resolution that gives a pretty decent performance boost. But it does make your game look a lot worse. And if you are going to use the setting, I think you're much better off using the improved technology, which is DLSS for this type of like FPS boost. Ambient occlusion will add enhanced shadows and environmental lighting in your games, which does look very pretty, I must say, although I like to turn this setting off as it does lower your FPS by quite a bit. An isotropic filtering, this enhances the visual quality of game textures when your camera is at a steep angle. The higher you do set this filter, the less blurry the textures will look. However, I do turn this off as I do want more FPS. Anti-aliasing modes. All of these modes right here do help eliminate jagged edges on game objects by adding a sort of like smooth filter. But I myself do like to turn these off as they do cost a lot of FPS. Background application max frame rate. This allows you to set a max FPS for background applications. But most of you should turn this off as it's only beneficial in very specific scenarios. CUDA GPUs. This lets you specify one or more GPUs to use. I think this is best left on all unless you want to use a specific GPU if you do have multiple. Also ensure that the CUDA fallback policy is left on the driver default to avoid issues. DSR factors or dynamic super resolution. This right here is a pretty outdated technology that helps improve image quality by rendering the image and scaling it at a high resolution. But I personally wouldn't use this as it will hurt your FPS big time. Instead like I mentioned earlier, you should consider using a newer technology like DLSS to get that sort of FPS boost. Oh, be sure to turn off DSR smoothness as well, as that's just an additional DSR setting. Low latency mode. This mode can massively reduce latency in competitive games. It does this by removing the rendering queue between the CPU and GPU, which removes one latency step from your mouse clicking to reaching the display, resulting in overall lower system latency. I myself, I love this setting, so I like to keep it on, but I did find that for my PC, Ultra did lower my frame rate, so I like it on on for that specific reason, but it's one of those settings that you need to try out and see which one works for you and your PC. Max frame rate, this option allows you to cap your FPS to a max setting, but I like to set this to off as you can set the max frame rate cap in most games. Monitor technology, now this setting right here will only be visible to those out there whose monitors do support NVIDIA G-Sync. If you didn't know, NVIDIA G-Sync is responsible for adjusting your monitor's refresh rate to become dynamic, causing display refreshes only when a frame is sent from the GPU, which basically solves issues like screen tearing. So G-Sync can be useful to some as it does have a lot of benefits, but please make sure you do set it up properly. As a popular website called Blurbusters.com tested G-Sync monitors and confirmed that a cap frame rate of 3 FPS less than your refresh rate 
right. We'll give you the lowest latency for G-Sync and V-Sync. Multi-frame sampled anti-aliasing. This removes jagged edges and smooths out graphics, resulting in improved visuals. But I'd turn this off as with it being an anti-aliasing setting, it will cost you a lot of FPS, which we don't want. Open GL settings. This allows you to choose specific GPUs that can be used for Open GL. Both of these settings are best left on the default ones. Power management mode. This lets you choose between power and performance on your graphics card. However, after testing this setting, I can confirm that the performance setting didn't really increase my FPS that much. All it really did was increase temperatures and power usage. However, that is just from testing on my PC, which is quite high end. I think it's something that you should test on your PC and see what's best for you. I myself will be keeping this setting on the default option. Preferred refresh rate. This allows you to set your monitor's refresh rate, so it should be left on the default highest available setting. However, in addition to that, I like to go into my Windows display settings and also ensure that that's on the highest refresh rate too. Shader cache size. This stores any shaders from the game, but it has to compile in real time for use later. The larger the shader cache is, the less likely you are to have to regenerate that shader, which can result in better performance. But there is a downside to this, which is wasting disk space on a larger shader cache. Most people, they do like to set this on like 10 gigabytes. As people have claimed, it helps with frame rate stuttering. I myself though like to keep it on default as I haven't noticed that much of a difference at all. Texture filtering settings. All of these settings here allow you to decide if you prefer performance, quality, or a balance between the two. So after testing, I've found the best settings to be on, allow, high performance, and having trilinear optimization turned on. Those settings right there have given me an FPS boost, but it's something you need to try for yourselves and have a mess around with. Threaded optimization. This allows your computer to utilize several processor cores at once. Very confident the best setting for this is auto, as it basically allows Nvidia to figure out if you have a multi-core slash hyper-threaded CPU or not, and they'll automatically give you the best setting. Then we've got vertical sync, virtual reality pre-rendered frames, and the rest of the 3D settings. I think all of these should be left on default. Also, I want to make an important note that these are all global settings. If you want to use these settings for a specific game, you can do so via heading to the program tab at the top and selecting the game. Oh, as well, if any of these settings don't work out for you, you can restore them back to default via that button at the top right. Moving on, we've got the change ACC state setting. Now, this won't be visible for everyone. I believe it's a setting that's only available for those that have a high-end GPU. And the setting basically allows you to utilize the VRAM more, I think. And it's beneficial for things like machine learning. But I think most of us just game, so keep this off. Configure surround. For this, you want to keep the span displays with surround unchecked. And for the physx setting, you want to keep that on auto, or you can select your specific GPU. Change resolution. This is where most gamers will change their resolution, or rather set up a stretched resolution. However, if you want to find out what the best type of stretched resolution is for you, you should check out my in-depth tutorial on screen right here. But while you are inside of here, ensure that the highest refresh rate is selected. Adjust desktop color settings. This area is where you can change your color settings to improve the look of your game. Most people tend to increase the digital vibrance to get a result like this on screen, where you can see the colors are a lot more vibrant. Rotate display. This is obviously where you can rotate your displays. It's only really beneficial to those out there with multiple monitors who desire a position like this on screen. View HDCP status. For this setting, I just recommend leaving it all on default. Digital audio. Same as before, I just recommend leaving all of these settings here on default. Adjust desktop size and position. Now, after testing a few of these settings, I did find that I got the highest FPS possible at a native resolution with no scaling. However, I don't like to use no scaling as I do play with a stretched resolution sometimes, so I like to just keep this setting on full screen. As for perform scaling, I like to choose the GPU setting with the box ticked for override. However, some people do choose the display setting. It just depends if you want to display scale or not, if you do play a stretched resolution sometimes. But most of these settings here are personal preference and they do depend if you play a stretched resolution or not. Set up G-Sync. Obviously, this setting right here will only be visible to those that have a G-Sync monitor, which I myself do and do utilize. Same with the multiple monitors. If you have multiple monitors, this is where you can set them up. Then finally, we've got the video color and image settings, which for both of these, I like to just keep on the default options. Moving on yet again to NVIDIA's new app that's currently in 
compared to, by the way. This right here is basically an improved GeForce Experience app because one, it looks a lot better, two, it functions way better, and three, it's got a ton of new features. Oh, and you can use both the NVIDIA app and the NVIDIA control panel together. So once you have installed the NVIDIA app, if you head over to the graphics under global settings, this is where I like to further optimize my global settings. I like to turn off RTX Digital Vibrance as I don't use it. I leave CUDA GPUs on default. I turn off DSR factors and image scaling. For low latency, like I mentioned earlier, I keep this on, but it's something you should test out on your PC. Max frame rate, I turn off. G-Sync, I do use this as my monitor supports it. If you don't, don't use it. Power management, I found that this is best left on normal or on default after my testing, but you can see here, you can tweak it further if you'd like to. Same with shader cache, I myself like to keep this on default, but you can tweak it further. Then we've got vertical sync and the VR options, which I like to keep on default. Do remember that if any of these settings don't work out, you can simply restore them back to default. Moving on finally, we've got NVIDIA Profile Inspector, where you can configure hidden NVIDIA settings. Just simply Google it, then click on the GitHub link, then download the latest version, where you'll then need to extract it. And after that, you are all good to go. What I like to configure in here is a setting called Potato Graphics that can boost your FPS with the obvious lower graphical quality, which I did make a video about. But if you want this, you need to firstly select what game you want to use it for. You then need to scroll down to anti-aliasing. You need to change this setting to 0x08 replay mode all. From there, you can scroll down to texture filtering. You can turn off the driver control LOD bias. Then below that, this is where you can configure how potatoey you want the graphics to be. A few options are low graphics. These are the settings on screen. Then you've got ultra low graphics. These are the settings on screen for that. I myself like low graphics as it's a good happy medium. The settings for that are both plus zero, 5,000 on the LOD bias settings. Then after that, you can apply the changes and you'll see in game you now have potato graphics. But if these settings are a bit too much for you and you just don't like them, you can revert them. Just make sure that the game itself is selected. From there, you want to click on that green NVIDIA button, which will restore all of these settings back to default. And after that, don't forget to apply the changes. But that right there has been my full guide on the best NVIDIA settings and much more. If the video helped, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel. And before you do go, feel free to check out my other videos on screen right now.